This is either going to be the most expensive home movie ever, or like it'll, we will never have any friends in the music business again. This is the title track off the untitled album Metallica. It's called Don't Tread On Me. <laughs> Heavy metal seems to be getting into like a cartoony kind of a thing. All these like fancy word plays for album titles and all these kind of cartoon things on the cover. It's just like, I think we'd really like to kind of shy away from that. It's going into everything from album title to album covers to stage setups and everything like that. So that's kind of where our minds are at at the moment. They're a little bigger. What I'm saying is we were just talking about songs, and I'm just saying when you put the low, the low vocals, the low Jason fucking vocals, it just goes dark, and that's it. End of story. Okay. What, what do you think's gonna happen live? That's how we fucking sing. That's live, how... it doesn't matter. Oh. <laughs> you do the parts that instantly come to mind. Right. Yeah, and if you got Jason and Kirk going, doubling you on Misery, if you're singing the melody and Kirk shouts it and Jason does the low part, then it's going to sound like a gang vocal. You don't have to have that little thing there. You don't, because the kids are all going to be going, misery. You don't need that. It's understood. Nobody fucking, when, when you sing, uh, when Motley, when Motley do it live, of course, they press a keyboard and it's there, but the fucking kids wouldn't know if there was a harmony there or not. If anything, it's stupid that they got a harmony. They don't need that. When they, everybody goes, whoa, yeah, the kids are all doing it anyway. Live is a different thing. You know, I did all the drum tracks in a week. James did all the basic rhythms in about four days. So we've been waiting for Kirk the whole time. Yeah, this whole fucking time. Kirk would get down here and sit around for four months and wait for him. <laughs> God fucking hit field. All of that guy. Oh, <laughs> Andy looks after James on when we're traveling on the road, when we're playing live shows around the world. It's not so bad the choice of notes and stuff like that. I just think it's, you know, rhythmic playing. Right away, right away. You know, if it had a little more thing to it, I don't know. Yeah. Right away, right away, right away. Yeah, still. Leaning into it. Leaning into it, a little more bluesy. Right away, right away, right away, something. Yeah, I actually was happy about those things. That would work. What do you think, Vinny? Yeah, I think it'll work. You think
great, man. Vocal is the most important thing. <coughs> Why did you tell me that 10 years ago when I just moved on to the point? The new natural Metallica. Natural Metallica, man. Bye. Yeah. Did you take the padding out, Fleming? How are you feeling, Lars? Good. Spontaneity was really flowing there. A lot of times, the main riff gets a little too happy in the song. Making a record for me is just a bunch of decisions that have to be made over the course of a long period of time. It's sitting fine. Let's do this. Um, should you have more high end here? Should you have more low end here? Should this be longer? Should there be a guitar melody here or here or whatever? And you just go for however long it takes and hope that you make the right decisions all along the way. We're gonna get a little more shit in the box. From the start, we knew we had some pretty good songs, and it was just a matter of molding them exactly how we wanted them in the studio and basically getting them on tape, getting the best sounds we could. Basically, we knew what we were up to, and uh, the end product was definitely what we were after as far as sound and muscle. Yeah, we were all recording the tracks live. Now try it a little longer. Gag, go, 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 get a little ba. Having the other two guys there this time definitely helped me mentally. <laughs> I didn't have to sit there with Lars by myself going insane. Fuck that up. I did. Oh. Here we go. It was good because it gave us a chance to work on our individual parts while Lars's drums were going to tape. And uh, it, it also gave us an opportunity to, to feed off each other energy-wise. And uh, a lot of spontaneous things happened while we were doing that. Let me tell you a story. OK, I was at this. This was a Mercy gig, right? And their electric Here? band. No, up in San Francisco. And there was this electric guy there who said, fuck, man, you guys are so loud at the metal ads. I, uh, and I didn't have any earplugs. I just got some, uh, some paper towel, wadded up, and put it in my ear. And then afterwards, my ear hurt so badly, like for days. So I went to the doctor about a week later, and the doctor looked in my ear and pulled out this big old string of, of like moldy, rotted uh, paper towel out of my ear. I'm looking at him, I'm going, you fucking idiot. <laughs> this guy works for a record company. <laughs> Recording together on the new album worked out much better. It was much more of a, a family vibe thing. Uh, Lars always needs James as kind of his inspiration, and uh, James felt that he needed us there. So we did it as a family, and I think that it really shows through in the strength of the drumming, and I think it made a big, big difference. All that is is a, that section there is just a musical passage, right? There's no lyrics there. James. Put up the other snare and let's rock.
We took a lot of time to find the exact sound that was going to work with James. Now we can set this all back up, the bass sound from God. I finally realized I really have to approach it as a bass part to make it more of a band thing rather than just doubling the guitar part that I'd done in the past. You know, that was one of the factors why you didn't really hear any bass on the Justice album. It wasn't just the fact that, you know, it was kept down in the mix, but actually uh, I was playing the same thing as guitar, so it was muddy and everything up, and it just it didn't work well. well. I like it when you don't play before the chorus. You do a you do a da 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 and there's a, like a space right there on the guitar. On uh, this song, they go uh, they go a whole step down. So uh, this E string here is a D. Jason uh, was playing it earlier with a uh, with a five string B string, so the B was down to A, so it flopped around quite a bit. So uh, I'm playing with the action. So I'll take it in the next room, put it up on the strobe, and uh, reintonate it. And uh, that's about it. So we're doing. I'll show you which one we gotta get.
Great, great. I'm really excited about the way. Stop that, would you? You've already ruined my career. You guys are horrible. Hold on. Hold on, Pete. I just think this is different. The other living songs... They don't exist. Right. right. So let's do what's best let's for this, this song. Riff. Right. Right. Okay. This riff sounds a lot better with the space. I don't think there's any comparison. I think it sounds way better. I think it's got a lot more groove to it. Like I said, the first time I heard it, I compared it to Cashmere. Still compared it to Cashmere. John Paul Jones doesn't go boom, 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 boom. The drums go right? And the bass plays along with the guitar because it's a great da 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 That's a bass riff. That, but that, that's the whole feel. It's like the cellos, everything goes da 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 and that's the same vibe. What? No, if you could settle, if on those notes where you pump, if you could settle back where the fucking drums are, it just hasn't done yet. I'm saying if you got a chance to try that, then it might have that feel that I think it could have, which it doesn't have when you play so ahead of it. I got Jason to pay more attention to my hi-hat hand, and so if I'm playing like eighth notes on like the hi-hat, then he'd be playing like eighth notes on the bass and stuff like that, and we'll just get like this really kind of cool groovy thing going. Just a vocal and fucking there you go. Just a couple edits, guitar parts. harmonies, no guitar parts. New lyrics. It's fucking great, man. Turn great the song. bass up on it, though. The bass is the fucking... That's is the song. Bass is the so song. Wrote the riff. Bass is the band now. There's two bass tracks. One's real MIDI. Yeah. You don't like that one. Mm. It's a little MIDI. Yeah. Was two separate bass? I mean, there's three. Direct, two amp. No, direct amp and then boombox and then sample bass on this one. Because we don't have enough real bass, so we got to put a little bit of sample bass mm -hmm. on there. I really like to still boombox. emphasize that thing in the chorus a little more on the hat. Do, 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 do. Okay. You want to emphasize what he's playing? Skipping little girls or something. Da, da, da. Like tap shoes. <laughs> I prefer if, if, if it was more shoes. of a feel thing in the chorus. So it was more of a shuffle beat rather than and let you go. Ch -ch 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 -ch. No, I don't want to. But do it. Isn't there something? You had some suggestion other than cool about doing something. Yeah, doing it here. Yeah. With Scott. So what about we just need to go with sad then? Yeah. How many notes do you got a lot? <laughs> Not really. We're doing fine. <coughs> Should be done by Wednesday. Take off the rest of next week. I went wrong. What time tomorrow, James? What time do you want to say? What time is this shit supposed to go on until? Until five. Okay, I'll be here at twelve. <laughs> no, you're supposed to be out at. You're supposed to be able to be here by like noon. Okay, then I'll. Twelve thirty. Let's go for twelve thirty, James. Okay. What's the chorus in this? How do you play that? F sharp. 
CB Sandman was the first song that we wrote for this new album. It's sort of the best indication of where our heads were at in the summer of 1990 when we sat down and wrote those songs. It's the simplest song we've ever written. It's basically a one riff song with variations of that riff for the bridge and for the chorus. Enter Sandman had been in my lyric book for about 100 years and no one liked it until we yanked it out again and saw a little more to it this time. The main riff is Kirk's. We just built on from there. When I came up with the riff for Sandman, I didn't even really think twice about it. I just threw it on tape and uh, thought, well, you know, maybe these guys will like it. Lars called me up and said, wow, man, this is a really great riff. If there's a solo or something that you have to work on, I could work with James and do some clean guitars before we do vocals tomorrow. What? I don't think it's really all that fair to fucking James to have to. If we can split it up a bit, I think that's what we should do. I'll do some of the clean guitar stuff. And I'll do some vocals. Oh, that that's that way we'll be guys. splitting it up. <laughs> <laughs> Always here to help, man. Yeah. <laughs> or being you guys are really easy to get along with. <laughs> Take suggestions really good, too. Hey, man, I'm always willing to donate my services. You know that, Rock. And I'm always willing to get in the way as much as possible. <laughs> well, I think Which he, I believe I do better than anybody else. It's good to I know think, that everybody knows we should has a role in that. If you want to you know? play tomorrow, I think one day this week we got to take off so we can do something. Sunday. <laughs> uh -oh. I need to record a week in San Francisco. <laughs> I need to. I need to go to Denmark. For <laughs> <laughs> I, can't, I can't record. I have to do it in San Francisco. It's, it's serious. Well, go ahead, take your tapes and go, man. <laughs> I tried to slap him in the head a couple times. Oh, oh, hey, I believe in you, though. You know that? I believe you slap him around. Every time he gets cheeky with me, I just go, you're rushing one more time. <laughs> you're rushing one more time. You're rushing one more time. You're rushing one more time. And he goes, ah! And he loses it. See, I know how to get to you. Even when it's good, oh. you're rushing. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that would because what I would do too if I was pissed off at something, just say re record it. Yeah, you're just rushing. To prove they were not right. <laughs> yeah, but. <laughs> doesn't always at work. One time it doesn't even, always work, does it? At, at one time it, it even got to the R word. Dude, you know what you should do? <laughs> the R word. <laughs> what you do, like, to really piss them off, like, when you really want to get them, you should say, you're behind. Oh, you talk, talk to us. <laughs> Every once in a while, you talk to us. Just to fuck them up. Believe it or not, you're the behind. B word. The B word. The B word, the R word. Jesus! There you go. Here we go. When me and James get together and write. We just deal a lot with audio tapes from the other guys' stuff and basically just write songs around the main big riffs that we have. Let's go from the top. Let's do this first verse. Little one is just a little out of tune. So we'll just sing the line, we'll punch in. Say your prayers, little one. You gotta get up for the one. Say your prayers, do do do. Here we go. Little one. Yep. <laughs>
separate the two when you play the difference between the F and the G. It seems to take away from it when he plays straight through it. Just in that, in the hook section. If you want it the other way, I just don't think it sounds good. I mean, we can do it that way. I don't think it sounds good, man. I think it's, 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 it's ignoring the dynamics of the song. That's what I'm saying. You're ignoring it. Even your toms don't come thundering like, you know, they're gonna, they're coming in like kind of, like I want to Yeah, that's what I'm saying. The bass should be with them, right? Maybe doing the same part, but just not fucking go, 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 go. That's what I'm saying. And then when the guitars do come in, he can start fucking hitting it like he usually does. Like full. That's all I'm saying. It's like dynamics. But well, let's straighten out this part. Now that all the fucking big brains are here. Um, which part might that be? What he's gonna play over the riff. I don't like it. What he's playing that? Main riff. Yeah. I don't like that either. What? Um, Stefan's on line two. You want to take a call? No. Sure does. No, I mean, fucking. Have you, have you thought about like doing some kind of vocal? I sure have. Or something? I sure have. I mean, it's great being all spooky and shit, but that gets really old really quick. Mm -hmm. Well, the first thing that we did is we organized the rest of the song, and by that time it wasn't like uh, when we sang it last time. It wasn't really. Hey, let's start filming around yeah, with the tag. Uh, Because we tried a fucking thing at the top. What? No? No, the thing that he did at the top. Oh, the rattle? Yeah. yeah. I just don't want it to be too cluttered, that song. Do you know what I mean? Uh-huh. You try these things, they don't work, they don't. Sometimes you get, you know, when you get people people to do things for yeah, the first well. time, you get first impressions, and sometimes you can get something like, ooh. Yeah. No, I dig the fucking part. Man, who told you to come on? man. Dark is the motif here. Dark is the motif. And why should the song be any different, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Our friend Lars is going to cue you visually when you can start. Here we go. Sleep with one eye open, gripping your pillow
time we've used that piece we put in something else before it. Yeah. No, it's a downbeat. This one's push. Well, downbeat to the first snare. See, there we put in a downbeat to the first snare. Here we put in we put them in at the top of every yeah. downbeat to the first snare. Riff one. How do we look gonna be able to do guitar in this a new bag? He's like, take eight teams. Uh, off the Is floor. I was waiting for that. Fuck you, Hat. Let's take 18. Uh, it's on sale, Hat. The intro. It'll dirty up real nice. Yeah. There's 65 bucks. Yeah, where'd you get it? Conrad's. It's in Beverly Sam. My furniture price. 195 Furniture and leather bags. Let me sit on it when it's full. Did you get that? On sale. Anyway, are we going to put this in? My wife's in bed. Bob's in purse. Boss little baby, don't say a word. And never mind that noise you heard. It's just the beast under your bed. vibe around the room. Realizing how shitty a drummer I am. <laughs> but but you got all of the awards. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, it goes to show you. <laughs> now I'm sitting here um, listening to all the takes off the floor and uh, Trying to make some basic notes and trying to get an idea of where the best uh, performance is, where the best shit is from the live takes, and then make some notes. Here's a set of notes, and then just kind of put the best shit together. And uh, this is the last edit, but the song is kind of depressing at the moment. Let's take the last Paul. Let's go try the combo out there. Dwayne Almond special. Jeez, mm -hmm. imagine Kirk using a fucking. If it got out, you used the last Paul in this album. I pl I've been play I played that all, all the whole last tour. Did you? Yeah. So I, it, it's it's known that I I played Les Pauls. Oh, I mean, it's a known fact. I'm, it's it's not documented. Like, it's not like you know I'm I'm being scandalous or anything.
know, we gotta go for a spontaneous live thing. Keep it on all the time. These are the guys that have been following us around for the last seven months, annoying us. This is what they look like. <laughs> you, you, look, you guys battle one. it out? Are you battling for number one? So, battling see, for number check one. it out. This is how the stuff looks. See, it's completely out of focus. I'm just trying to be them. See? <laughs> God, that fucking light stinks. What's burning? This is them filming. Ooh. It's another exciting day in the studio. Over here. Hey, man. You fucking use Dude, the goddamn phone lines from your fucking long distance phone calls to your Congrats. fucking buddies over in fucking Brooklyn. I'm cool in Japan. What are you doing? Hey! Stop. Hey, you guys get fucking bored. You start filming. Hey, leave your fucking mags around here and shit. They're fired. It means you too, motherfucker. Uh huh? I'm not doing it. Hey, watch the jam. Hey, look at him. Over, man. Okay, quick, my is over, man. Here, focus on this. Focus. <laughs> <laughs> Take it easy, huh? Yeah, that's it. Focus, buddy. Look at it. It's old Vinny and Adam doing a sneaky shot of us. <laughs> Remember how when he first filmed, it was like, you know, he was like going up ladders and going for camera angles and and kind of like doing all no, these interesting shots. There. Now, it's like, I look over there, he's chewing gum, he's reading a magazine, and going like this. I'm hard at work right now, waiting. Fuck. I got a zit coming in on the bottom of my nose. Waiting. You should make these tanning lights, at least then, Yeah, you know. at least we can get a studio tan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you know. How's the book? Is it, is it okay there? <laughs> Waiting. You know, you could just put it on a tripod and, and you know. Oh. Enjoy my bit, you know. I'm helping with, helping with the filming. You left me, left me with a good shot. Am I doing it right? Hello? Are you there, James, bud? What's, what's going on, man? Nothing's working. What's, what, what's going on, man? Well, you know, it's exciting here. Well, what happened was that we had to take out accident insurance because one of the guys in the film crew, he kept ripping cables out of tape machines. Hello? <laughs> Management? Fucking, I quit. Fucking mad. Bob Rock is just too much of a nice guy. I can't take it anymore. You know, oh, we're not going to use any of that. <laughs> That's out. You know what's funny? As soon as the camera comes around, your, your lips pucker and your cheeks go in. Why? <laughs> what? Because I have a chunky face. Oh. I want to look good. Somebody's got to look good around here. You don't do it very well. I need a little more emotion on the end of the line, man. Like... <laughs> jam it in there. It's like... It's jamming in there, man. It's jamming in there. You got to fucking jam it in there. It's like we're talking war, we're talking liars, and we're talking dragons here, man. Let's hear the flies. In the in the kitchen with Oz Fox. <laughs> Yo, man, any good for you? To put the little uh, you know. Oh yeah, it's fat. Oh, but that's not something you have to. Well, I do. Well, I'm just looking out for you guys' uh, best interest, you know. Hey, hey I'm playing. It's fucking over. Oh, you're already in. No, it's all right, I'm on, yeah, on a fat diet. <laughs> he's, only, he's on a fat diet. Look at this guy. Hey! He can't even hire decent health these days. <laughs> Get this thing away from him. God damn it. Some of those kind of things, you know, you know, contributing to some of those kind of things, you know, you know, metal up your ass and hammers lying in, you know, pools of blood and fucking electric chairs flying through fucking lightning storms and stuff like that. <laughs> Look at this fucking sly bastard. I hate that fucking camera, man. I hate that camera.
that light huh? back. Yeah. Why um, today? Why today? That, Why do they have to pick today to come to work? Isn't there a Rick Rubin party or something to go to, Adam? What do you think? It's okay, Adam? I think you had to take a cassette. <laughs> Would you buy this? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I like the Xerox. Just, just think of it. What's cool is the next on the next album, when we, on album six, when we have like a great piece of artwork, it's yeah. going to make that look even stronger because yeah. this is so bad. I think you'll regret that 10 years down the line. We're working our way up. So, you know. I don't know if I'd buy that. I don't know. I just might pass it don't on. Don't worry, man. You're not going to. You're not going to want to listen to it after all that shit. We might let you backstage. <laughs> we remember your name. All right, turn the camera off. <laughs> so what about these interviews tonight? It just seems dumb for me to do both of them. If they're, you know, same country, same everything. I don't know. I'll think about it. Want to try that again? No. <laughs> it's your life. Hi, I'm Kirk. Yeah. Yeah. Is that it? Is that it, man? Is that the last one? Hey, James, flight. can you be quiet a second? Fuck. <laughs> We're just gonna fucking make it up as we go along. Okay. okay. What song is that? Uh, this is the fourth track on the mega... No. <laughs> is that the last one? Melbourne. Is that the last one? Come on, just keep going. Don't worry about it. Melbourne. Do it again. Melbourne. Try again. <laughs> <laughs> we should use all these outtakes. No! <laughs> all right, hey. okay, all right, go. No. One, two, three. Roll. Melbourne, hey, it's Lars from Metallica. Just, when is this being done? I don't know how to Canberra. Canberra? 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 Ian. Ian? Canberra. Canberra. Hey, Jane, where's Ian? It's okay, man. It's okay. Big live, Canberra. Okay? Okay, Ian, what's the name of this Australian city? Canberra? Canberra. Canberra? Canberra. Canberra. Okay. Good day, Canberra. Cache. Why? Hey. Canberra. Okay. Shh. Canberra. No, Canberra. Oh, man. Come on. Are you sure Headfield has done this? Headfield has done this, but he can do it as well as you did, so we're going to use yours. Come on, let's go. Hey, New York City. It's Lars from Metallica. We are. Oh, shut up, shut fuck. Up. <laughs> hey, quiet, man. <laughs> New York, hey, it's Lars from Metallica. We're hanging out in Frisco right now, rehearsing for our upcoming European tour with um, ACDC. Shut up, fuck. <laughs> shut up. <laughs> hey, you got hey, get him out of the room. Cut. Oh, yeah, I'm going to be there. Hey, oh, yeah. Hey, you know what? I'm going to be there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> cut. I'm going to stay. I'm sitting in a fucking row 52 <laughs> CJ, right? New York City, hey, it's Lars from Metallica. We've been rehearsing out in San Francisco for the last week, and uh, we got this thing going tonight where you guys get a chance to hear the new record. We got some footage that we shot in the studio of the making of the record. We got some other crap from the early days, and I think a clip of Master of Puppets that you might not have seen. I think one or two actually, one or two of us might actually be looming around here somewhere tonight, so uh, maybe we'll see you around later. Meanwhile, here's the new record. Keep thrashing. Oh. Man, fucking pink marker looking. Oh, now you see it all. <sighs> well, doesn't look like you need to sink tonight. You just crumple that paper <laughs> up and throw it away. <laughs> no, the ones in the <laughs> one of them I get to keep. <laughs> the ones in pink are the ones that you like. That yeah. Oh. See to me, these ones are the ones that to kick your ass. That fucking, these are the ones that can. That are not punk. Yeah. Okay. Basically, that, if, if, these are the ones I always remember. Who are you? Who, where you been? Where are you from? I don't remember. No more of the crap rolls out your mouth again. <laughs> I just don't remember. You don't remember it? Bullshit. No. You keep telling me not to fucking sing it. <laughs> <laughs> I love her and she this and that. This is what happens, man. Fucking, I don't know. I've been on the road care. and I've seen it, man. I've been there, done that. But I mean, the first see, two lines, I all no. But the thing is, I questioned them when I wrote them down. Actually, the ones that I didn't outline in pink, right? If the if there was other ones, in place of those those ones that don't have a pink line through them, what I'm saying is that they would apply to what you're saying, right? Could be about rock wise and the gossip, but, but they could also apply to what I saw on TV today, and which makes a song bigger. 
It just doesn't focus in on like nah, 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 nah. Like that. That's all I'm saying. Because we were talking about singles again. Singles and radio things. I know, it's like, mm, I don't want to think about it. You guys talk about it. Well, a lot of good it does me and him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm supposed to sing it like that. Like what? That is? You should be in on the conversation. He's sitting there going, Holer is like the greatest song anybody's recorded apart from the lyrics. It's like, I, I can only hear that so many times a day until you need to be in on the conversation. You know I'm I mean? rewriting the two, first two lines, right? Is that fixing things? Or does there need to be more or what? There might need to be some more. But there's a lot of lines that are fucking great. Holier stands out in a shitty way. I think some of the stuff stands out in a shitty way only because of some of the reactions that people have and I guess I guess I'm I I've said it. But you see the whole thing is is like the first time the first time we rehearsed and you played Holier, I reacted to it. And thought it was something else. And then when I played a different solo, you didn't like it. <laughs> but where's the lyrics? I don't know. Why don't you where kind of scr well, chicken you scratch guys, on something? Somebody took my book yesterday and I haven't gotten it back. I'm sure if I try real hard to find it, set somewhere. Five bucks? I guess what I'm saying in a, a roundabout way is that myself as a producer, I think the fucking holier has to be brave. Lyrically. It's not going to be a hit. Find that song. There you go, good. Come back tomorrow for more of Bob's secret notes <laughs> when he's sleeping again tomorrow. See ya. And a Metallica morning to you. Spanish classical, which is nothing new. We've used that thing before. It's real shimmery for a acoustic. The other guys hate me for it, but I really like some country western stuff. And I wanted to put it in somewhere, and I did. They like it. Change the key, you guys. This snare is really out in the open. We're gonna take like 25 minutes here and change the snare and do another set. Okay?
do you feel like I'm all over the place? Because I don't. I can usually tell when I start. I, I'm not saying that you're all over the place. I'm just saying the overall feel isn't as good yeah. as what it was. And but that's probably got a lot to do with the other three guys. Well, also. I think it's got a lot to do with it. Yeah. So uh, there you go. We'll just tune up the snare. We'll do it one more time. Cool. And then Bob's your uncle. Yeah. <laughs> I asked someone something, they fucking walk out on me. Jeez, fucking Christ. No fucking respect, huh? Jeez. The earlier takes when it was feeling really good, almost like to the point of where we could have taken one whole take, is when you guys were playing good. I think it was the best solo I did was like two takes, though. Well, that's the solo we're gonna use on the album anyway. <laughs> what? Got a phone call. Get the fuck out of here. That line that you do in the middle of the two CG things in the solo is really good. That works really good. You should do a variation on the very last bit. I don't mind being the bottom jokes as long as they're as low as mine. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Sorry, bud. I, I should apologize for that. I'm supposed to build up your confidence, not rip you apart. Jason that hasn't already been said. <laughs> He's kind of like the stable guy in the band. It's like, you know, you got me over here and James, you know, four miles that way and Kirk sort of floating around and, and then Jason kind of in the middle, keeping things stable, which is cool. The Ace Face. Yeah, what's happening? The first Metallica album with Jason in, where you can hear the any, fucking with bass. Any, with any bass player, you can hear any bass. So are we going to use the back room now? Is that what the story is? I'm just asking your opinion, I guess, really. Um, I, the big room's getting crowded. I know that. <laughs> Here's my idea. You want to tell me, maybe we got the SWR stuff. We're gonna see how it sounds like. I pretty much think it's gonna crush. I already tried it out and stuff. But with that Olympic bass, it's a stereo bass, right? Mm-hmm. Gonna do one head with the subwoofers for the bass pickup, uh -huh. right? One head with the eight tens on the treble pickup. Mm -hmm. And so do a direct line, the low head, direct line, the high head, mics the high cabinets, mics the low cabinets.
Because the tones started to shift right yep. there. Why the fuck do you cut all the necks off your T-shirts? Do you get a rash or something? <laughs> no, somebody, you, gave it, it somebody threw this on stage. Really? Yeah. Back when we couldn't afford to buy shirts, so I picked it up, and <laughs> this is how it came. Oh. Why do you have extra necks on your shirts? <laughs> <laughs> Bob, you're doing a good job. <laughs> oh, thanks, Kirk. Anyway. Contrary to popular belief, you're doing a good job. Contrary to popular belief, yeah. <laughs> no, I'm serious, though. Bob, well, yeah. where did the score come from? Michael came in. Everybody knows that. Michael came in and did something. Michael came in and did it. <laughs> <laughs> At Abbey Road in London. Abbey Road's famous. Abbey Road. <laughs> where the wall was done and it was where the Beatles recorded all their albums, James. Remember them? I heard a song. They were big like back in the 50s or 60s. 60s, yeah. Can you hear the live version goes into like big jam right there? Huh? Three yeah, I can really hear that like 15 minute fucking guitar solo Three wailing it. right there at the end. Harmony I guitars. Do. Skinner. I can, do that. I, can, I can see that too. You get the support act to come out and play with us and stuff. Get like five guitar players like the Outlaws. Look how big they are. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Jason, we I like to do it, but... Yeah, I'll get it. Scott, I'm going to have a nice phone. I've been on the phone with Booz Allen all day. Yeah, I'm making deals, man. <laughs> what a great day, huh? We want deal. Weekend's off. You want a GQ. Yeah. In the second day. I like this version. 42 is... Yeah. I like this version. I like this version. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, see, I'm the craziest, you know? Yeah. It's kind of like he's dragging from word to word. Yeah, but this part's messy. It doesn't sound as majestic. He's trying to get support. Yeah. Just all those shots. Looking fast. Yeah. Yeah, I know. 142 is what we played for that rehearsal. We got a dad in this, right? You like that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let's get this last verse. Too soft? No. No, nothing <laughs> else matters. No, no, nothing else. You gotta get those. The only thing is, is it's. You can't ad lib that little thing? Yeah, you should, but you still no, got. Nothing else. I, it's. If I talked nothing more, it's like. No, nothing else matters. Nothing. Nothing. Same note. 
No, nothing else. Yeah, it's just no, nothing else matters. Oh, else, two different notes. Yeah. Let's get this verse a couple times. At the same time? Mm hmm. I need one of these vocal sheets, another one. Fuck. That's where it is, man. I don't know. Something, it's not working for some reason. Jeez, do you think it might have something to do with these, like, fucking fluorescent lights right at your fucking it's, eyeballs, it's maybe? It sets the mood. Yeah, it really sets the mood. I'd say that's enough. No. To you, what is, nothing else matters. Well, lyrically, on lyrically. It's sitting on its own. Sitting on its own. Uh, a love for something else. A love for something else. Mm -hmm. But it's not direct. Mm -hmm. it's to not me, a person, it's not a beer, it's not a... Exactly. Person. It's exactly. And I have my interpretation of it. Mm -hmm. That's how all and the other lyrics have been, hopefully. Uh, what? That's how all the other lyrics have been, hopefully. Yeah, exactly. Except for holy to now, because it's direct. Oh, so you're saying being direct is not good. That's basically what I'm saying. Silence settles over the studio. And here we go. Also right part. Never open myself this way. Life is ours, we live it our way. Hold these words I don't just say. Trust I see and I find in you Every day for us something new Open mind for a different view And nothing else matters
more good fills and stuff. Uh, we've got to change the snare head and one of the tom heads. Annoys me when people don't go out and find out for themselves, you know, okay, I've heard about this Metallica band, I'm gonna go get the record and check it out and see what I think and make up my own opinion. Oh, wait, I read that they're a thrash metal band, and I think I hate everything about thrash metal, so I won't check it out for myself, even though it's somebody that might be able to relate to, say, the lyrics or some of the more subdued stuff. What do you think? Number one hit. <laughs>
Slashes on the top for like the second half of the song. Roger Dalton singing up on the wall. And then George might be in the music stand. I'm back to Dalton for a few days. Some sun. Wow. I'm in the bar. Hold on. I'm fucking used to the figure. I'm scheduling. We're in England. Can't wait to get home. I came down basically because, uh, you know, Freddie Mercury has always been one of my heroes, and this is a great way of saying goodbye to the guy, whoever's playing. You've got acts from every different variety of music here, and they're all playing because they had a great respect and love for Freddie. And, you know, the guy was one of my heroes, so that's why I'm here. That's why I'm always here. Look at this shit. Hey, Patty, where's the bathroom? Hey, Kirk, just right there. 
Have any of you ever seen a uh, book out before? <laughs> 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 Many times before in Germany. In Berlin, Waldbühne last year, then uh, two years ago in Hanover, and in Hamburg, and many others. Do you have a new album? Yeah, of course. We want to go play live and have people come see us. You know, when you get into playing bigger places, it's hard to keep it personal. You can see the first 20 rows, but you're out in blackness after that. We got to see, we got to have eye contact. We're trying to make it as personal as we can. Hair on straight, man.
you think so? I'm gonna get in on with this song, uh, song about truth within. It's the happy tune entitled Sad But
We don't like to thank you and Queen for letting us play here. Thank you very much for seeing us. around music and that's I think kind of a good way to uh, you know, get this age thing across to them here at the show. Great to see you band here today, <laughs> gentlemen. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. Terrific. Back to you, David. Back. Terrific. Well, thanks, guys. Congratulations <laughs> on your uh, triumphant <laughs> opening here. It was really great. Thanks. Kirk and James from Metallica are now with me backstage at the Freddie Mercury Tribute Concert at Wembley Stadium. They've just come off stage. So I guess I'll be supposed to yeah, it was a lot of fun. We got going, everything felt okay. People would have to see us as well. Hey! Barely even broke a sweat, you know. We got going a little bit, and then we had to, it was really, it really seemed like 20 seconds earlier. All of us? That's if there's anything I look forward to is just seeing James out there with the, uh, the rest of the guys who are and Tony Iommi, who's you know, going to be playing rhythm guitar behind James. So, I mean, when I saw James after he was down at the uh, sound check a couple of days ago, he was like 12 year old.
together. Did you guys film the Stone Cold thing? Yeah. Now we're all hugging and weeping. It was a moving experience. <laughs> <laughs>